Hi, this is Michael Altos. We are continuing our discussion of renal physiology, and this is recording part four. Now we get to the section on acid-base regulation, and we'll start with some basic definitions. An acid, for our purposes, will be a molecule that can release a hydrogen ion, so hydrogen chloride, or we see here carbonic acid. A base is a molecule that can accept a hydrogen ion, so the bicarbonate ion, phosphate ion, hemoglobin, and so on. The normal arterial blood pH is 7.4, which corresponds to a hydrogen ion concentration of 40 nanoequivalents per liter. Your body has a lot of different ways to regulate pH precisely. There are buffer systems that act within seconds to bind up hydrogen ions. Your lungs can act within minutes to eliminate carbonic acid as CO2. And your kidneys can act within hours to days to eliminate excess acid as well. Let's start with the bicarbonate buffer system, which consists of carbonic acid and bicarbonate salt. We see carbon dioxide in water can form carbonic acid, which can form hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ion. So when there's excess acid, it gets buffered by the bicarbonate ion, which is provided by sodium bicarbonate. The reaction moves to the left, creates CO2 and H2O, and the CO2 can be eliminated by respiration. When base is added, let's say sodium hydroxide, together with the carbonic acid, comes together to make sodium ion, bicarbonate ion, and water. Now, all acids can dissociate as described by their dissociation constant. This is simple chemistry that you've seen before, where we see the dissociated components divided by the concentration of the not dissociated component. And through a little bit of math, we can look at, we can plug in all of these values, and we get what's called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. This equation is basically telling us that the pH is directly proportional to the, hydrogen, the, the bicarbonate concentration and indirectly proportional to the PCO2. And in fact, you can calculate the pH of a solution if all you know is the PCO2 and the concentration of bicarbonate. The important take-home point here is that your lungs control your PCO2 and your kidneys control your bicarbonate ion concentration. So when you have an acid-base disorder that's due to CO2, we call it a respiratory acidosis or alkalosis. When it's due to your bicarbonate ions, it's called a metabolic acidosis or alkalosis. Now before we get into more details about that, let's look at another buffer system, which is the phosphate buffer system. It works in a similar way. It uses phosphoric acid and disodium phosphate. Here we see hydrochloric acid mixing with disodium phosphate. And we see sodium hydroxide mixing with the same compound in order to buffer acid or base. The pKa of this system is about 6.8, which is a little bit off from the 7.4 that we're used to working with in the serum. So this is a system that we mostly see happening in the renal tubules or in the intracellular fluid where conditions are more acidotic and where there's more phosphate concentration anyway. So now let's start talking about the respiratory regulation of your acid-base balance. In your extracellular fluid, normally your carbon dioxide exists at about 1.2 moles per liter. That corresponds to a PCO2 of 40 millimeters of mercury. As your alveolar ventilation increases, you know that PCO2 decreases and pH increases. On the other hand, when hydrogen ion concentration increases, that is the pH goes down and the system becomes more acidotic, alveolar ventilation increases in order to decrease PCO2. So we see a negative feedback loop here. Take a look at this graph here, which shows that as your rate of alveolar ventilation increases, 
your pH increases as you become more alkalotic. As your ventilation goes down, your pH decreases and you become more acidotic. As the pH of your blood decreases and becomes more acidotic, your ventilation goes up. And as pH increases and becomes more alkalotic, your ventilation goes down. So when lung function is abnormal, CO2 will build up and patients develop respiratory acidosis. Now let's look at the renal side of things. We know that the kidneys can excrete urine that is acidic or basic. Here we see the renal tubular lumen, the cells that line that lumen, and then the renal interstitium. We know that sodium bicarbonate is continuously filtered into the renal tubules. The body also secretes hydrogen ion into the tubules. Here you can see the sodium hydrogen ion pump. Let's imagine, to use some numbers, that your normal extracellular fluid bicarbonate is about 24. That's what we would see on a normal serum chemistry. We know that renal blood flow is about 180 liters a day. So that means that 4,320 milliequivalents of bicarbonate have been, are being filtered into this renal tubule every day. Now we can't be losing all of that bicarbonate. It has to get reabsorbed. So how does the body save all of that bicarbonate? Because if you didn't save it, you would become very, very acidotic. So what does the body do? It moves hydrogen ions secreted into the renal tubule. Each bicarbonate gets paired with one hydrogen ion to form carbonic acid. Well, that means that 4,320 milliequivalents of hydrogen ion have to be secreted into the tubules every day in order to save all of that bicarbonate. And that's the job of the kidneys. Now, your body also creates what we call non-volatile acids. You can see this acid is going to turn into something that can be turned into CO2. And CO2 can be managed by blowing out of the lungs. Your body creates what are called non-volatile acids, acids that can't be secreted by the lungs. And they actually have to be excreted in the urine. So really, your daily hydrogen ion excretion is more than 4,320. It's about 4,400 milliequivalents of acid altogether. Now, when a patient has alkalosis, the kidney is secreting less hydrogen ion. So less bicarbonate ion is reabsorbed and more is excreted in the urine. That's how the body manages alkalosis. If a body has acidosis, then the kidney will secrete excess hydrogen ion and it will also produce additional bicarbonate ion. The hydrogen ions will then be secreted in exchange for reabsorbing sodium ions. The hydrogen ions can also be secreted by ATP-dependent processes. There can be some reabsorption of potassium ions. And that allows the body to get rid of excess acid. The body can acidify the urine down to a pH of about 4.5. Now, if you do the math, that's only about 0.03 milliequivalents per liter of free hydrogen ion. That's far, far less than the 80 milliequivalents that we need to get rid of every day. So really, most of the hydrogen ion in your urine is buffered, either with phosphate or ammonia. This chart shows some different conditions that would lead to increased or decreased hydrogen ion secretion and bicarbonate ion reabsorption. Let's take a look at it for a minute. If a patient has an elevated PCO2 for whatever reason, then the body will respond by trying to secrete more hydrogen ion and retain more bicarbonate ion. Similarly, patients who have increased hydrogen ion or decreased bicarbonate ion will go through the same process. Patients who have decreased extracellular fluid volume will also increase hydrogen ion secretion, probably in an effort to retain more sodium and retain more water. Increased angiotensin II or aldosterone will also cause this and if patients are hypokalemic, 
So the normal response will be to bring more potassium out of the cells in exchange for hydrogen ion. And as a result, the increased hydrogen ion in the serum will lead to increased hydrogen ion secretion and bicarbonate reabsorption. All of these effects will happen in the opposite direction um, when we have the opposite effects occurring. We'll stop here with the recording. Please let me know if you have any questions.